the victim of that awful mass rape case in France has demanded that the graphic violence that was recorded by her then husband be shown to the world. And it was. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman here on True Crime MTN. And in a case that shocked everyone, including our audience here at True Crime MTN, you had the case of Gazelle Pellico, whose husband is on trial for having people rape his wife. And he caught much of it on video. This guy would not have been caught except for another brave woman who this defendant, the ex-husband, was upskirting, unrelated to his wife. He was out shopping and tried to use his camera to upskirt uh, a a stranger, a woman who then uh, wanted to press charges after an alert security guard notified her. And once they pressed charges, they found on this guy's phone images, recordings of this mass rape of his own wife. The wife did not know what was going on because she was drugged at the time. And people react in different ways to these situations. A lot of people just go into a shell because this is such a horrific trauma. Rape is an underreported crime. But this brave woman, what she has done is she has demanded that the videos that her then husband recorded be shown in court. She wanted everyone to see it. And I just have so much respect for Miss Giselle Pellico because, you know, she is doing this so that France finally wakes up in the post Me Too movement to the reality that France has not taken this seriously until now, apparently. This is the wake-up call. This is France's day of reckoning, where you had one of their most popular actors, Gerard Depardieu, who had these allegations around him for years. He was it didn't stop his movie career. He was never canceled. Uh, he, he was making movies just like always until finally there were criminal charges against him. And so France had been known as a country that didn't take these these allegations as seriously as others. According to the New York Times, and some of this language can be difficult to hear, there was Gazelle Pellico, the victim in the center of a rape trial that has rocked France, lying on a bed on her side, her arms limp before her, her mouth open. The sound of her snoring filled the courtroom. She appeared to be dead asleep. In the videos, she did not respond to the touches of the men who engaged with her body in sex acts. Ms. Pellico had fought hard for these videos to be shown publicly in the courtroom because, she said, they were incontrovertible evidence. While most rape victims have only their word and memory of events, Ms. Pellico has a library of proof in the form of videos and photographs taken by her own husband. Showing them publicly was essential, her lawyer, Antoine Camus, or Camus, told the courtroom, to look rape straight in the eyes. It was another astounding moment in the trial that for the past month had gripped France. The case has raised profound questions about relations between men and women, the prevalence of rape, and conceptions of consent. More than 50 men are on trial together. Almost all are accused of aggravated rape against Miss Pellico, a grandmother and retired manager at a big company, while she was in an unconscious state. Her former husband of 50 years, this was not just a short marriage, 50 years her husband, Dominique Pellico, has pleaded guilty to mixing drugs into her food and drink and inviting others into their home in a village in southern France where they had retired to join him in raping her limp body. While Miss Pellico, 71, had the right to request that the trial take place behind closed doors, she decided to make it public. She said that she did it not for her, but to protect other women. Shame, she said, must change sides from the victims to the perpetrators. The accused men appear to be a gallery of working class and middle class French society. Truck drivers, carpenters, and trade workers, a nurse, an IT expert, a local journalist. They range in age from 26 to 74. Many have children and are in relationships. Over four months, their cases are coming before the court in batches of six or seven a week. Okay, so that's how they're doing it because there are really no courtrooms to have a trial of 50 different defendants. I mean, I I wouldn't know where to start here in the United States. We don't have a courtroom that big. So uh, what they're doing in France is similar to what we do here in RICO cases, where you have these multi-defendants who are prosecuted six, 
people at a time. Here it's like six or seven a week and they just keep uh, cycling these people through. Interestingly, according to the New York Times, all but 15 of them have contested the charge. Many have argued that they were tricked into coming into their bedroom by Mr. Pellico, who had offered them a playful in uh, trio with his wife. Many say he led them to believe she was sleeping or pretending to sleep as part of the couple as part of the couple's sexual fantasy. Mr. Pellico manipulated them when they were vulnerable. Some of them have said and directed them in the acts like a stage manager. They said they had blindly followed his orders. That is ridiculous. I'm sorry, as a prosecutor, when you see someone snoring, when you see someone passed out, sleeping, and you think in your mind that this is some sort of act, that this is what's happened, maybe, just maybe you're being lied to. And if you are being lied to, well then the risk falls upon you for going over someone else's house and having sex with their wife who is either sleeping, passed out, drugged, or pretending to be, you better make sure you have consent before you do something like that. These guys are in a whole load of hurt. I mean, even if the men were tricked into going into the bedroom, once they're there and they see this unconscious woman, they engage in a crime. And unless they can show that there was some evidence that she consented in some way, but how? She was unconscious. She was asleep. She was drugged. The whole thing is, is just ridiculous as a prosecutor to think that these guys are leaning into that as their defense, that the guy told me his wife was into it. That wouldn't work in the United States, and it shouldn't work in France either. And according to the New York Times, over the course of their investigation, the police found more than 20,000 videos and photographs on his electronic devices, many of them in a digital folder titled Abuse. Now, I'm not making that up. The folder where he kept the videos was called Abuse. So... The entire country of France owes a lot to Miss Pellico for her bravery in coming forward and refusing to do this behind closed doors. She wanted the country to see what was happening, and that's how they have come to this, their day of reckoning. So we'll keep following this trial here on True Crime MTN. It's shocking, it's horrifying, but it's something that we must confront. The United States had gone through the Me Too movement, and now France is going through it, even though they seem to ignore it when it happened previously. So we'll keep following this matter on True Crime MTN. In fact, Ms. Pellico, according to reports, is becoming somewhat of a hero in France, and rightly so. It's because of her courage that she's forcing the country to confront sexual abuse. And the fact that France did not apparently treat it so seriously, that it emerged from the Me Too movement pretty much unchanged. Well, that changes now. And that's the latest here on True Crime MTN. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. The Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Please leave a comment below. I always appreciate your comments and your support as we go over 62,000 subscribers because of supporters like you. And I'll see you next time.